I know you're tired. I know you've been dieting for a long time. I know you're tired of the fact that you've probably plateaued already. I know you're tired of the fact that you're doing everything your coach tells you to do. You're not building muscle. You're not losing any more weight. So what are we supposed to do about that? What's going on, everybody? My name is William Grazione. I am the owner of The Educated Dieter. And in today's video, I'm talking directly to you, the woman out there that's been dieting for super long periods of time, that's finally felt like, okay, I'm plateaued. What do I do now? You're trying to do everything under the sun in order to achieve your outcome, but it's simply not happening. Let's dive into the video. So you've been dieting for a long period of time. Now, when we say long periods of time, look, I'm a nutrition coach, so I am no stranger to having people diet for three months, six months, or longer. But it's very context dependent. And maybe you've been on a low calorie diet now, call it 13, 1200 calories, whatever, for probably the last six months or longer. And you finally realize maybe you lost five or 10 pounds in the beginning, but now I'm stuck and I don't feel good anymore. So it's likely that the stress that you're kind of going through right now has also put you in a place where you're fatigued, you're tired, you're not building muscle, you're no longer burning body fat. And when you do all those grueling, tired, boring cardio sessions, you're not burning as many calories as you think you were. So let's go ahead and let's dive into the idea of metabolic adaptation. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of metabolic adaptation before, but coming from the health and physique space, we've been talking about metabolic adaptation now for over the last 10 years. And essentially what it is, is understanding simply that your body kind of works like a volume knob. Think about this as when we eat more calories, we prioritize our recovery, we eat enough protein, carbs, fats, and fibers, and we sleep really well, we can actually amplify our metabolism. We can crank the metabolism up, meaning that it's going to burn more energy. You're going to have more energy. And when you have more energy, guess what happens? Your body's actually less stressed. And a less stressed body will work with you, doesn't always keep working against you. But let me also paint the picture of that same volume knob. You constantly are doing 5K runs. You're jogging around the block with your girlfriends all the time. You're going to all the F45 classes, the Orange Theory classes, the cardio boot camps. You're doing all the stuff. They've got you on a meal plan. You don't even know how many macros you're eating. You have no idea how much fat you're eating, carbs, proteins, or fibers. But you know it's low calorie. And then you lose 5 or 10 pounds, and then you're stuck. You plateau. Why is this? That same volume knob that can be cranked up, it now turns down. And essentially what you found yourself in is a position where you are kind of shrinking the engine, right? So thinking about this logically, a larger engine will require more gas, a smaller engine, less gas. And when you focus on trying to feed yourself appropriately, you can build muscle. But when you focus on trying to diet yourself for a very long period of time, you can actually lose lean body mass. So the first idea that I want to drop off to you today is the idea of metabolic adaptation and understanding that fat loss doesn't last forever. And to tell you, you're not eating enough. So we need to implement some type of a break because I know you're sick and tired of dieting. I know you're sick and tired of feeling stuck. So what we need to do is stop the diet. Eat more food eat more calories. Now, if you want some guidelines on how to do that, I'd probably just start by adding in between three and 500 extra calories to your day to day right now. Do that over the course of three to five days, and I can guarantee you that you will begin to feel the benefit of eating more calories. Now, as a means to try to optimize this state, what you'd also want to do is make sure you're pairing that with heavy resistance training to pull yourself out of calorie restriction. You're feeding your body more amino acids now. Make sure you're eating a good amount of protein, trying to sleep appropriately, and you're probably gonna put yourself in a really amazing place where now you can build back the muscle that you lost by doing all them damn boring cardio classes, okay? So rule number one, we have to learn to identify what metabolic adaptation is, how you can spot it, and then how do you transition out of it once you know you're in that zone. All right, and tip number two is this. Ladies, you need to get strong. What do I mean by strong? Go to the gym, take a look at all the chicks in there lifting heavy stuff. All the chicks lifting heavy stuff also probably have the shape and the curves that you want. It's no surprise that when I ask one of my female clients, what do you want to look like? She usually sends me a picture of a gal that has a lot of lean body mass. But many of you are so stuck on weight loss 
you're losing weight, but you haven't actually built the muscle that you want to have in order to create the shape that you want to have. Now, obviously, every woman out there right now wants to build her delts and her glutes and her hams and her quads, but you're never going to be able to do that unless you can take time off of dieting. Now, when I say dieting, keep in mind, I just mean calorie restriction. Okay, calorie deficits. A calorie deficit is not a 12 month program. A calorie deficit is only for an intentional time period to lose body fat. Now, once you're done with that calorie deficit, what do you do afterwards? This is where building muscle comes into place. Because if we can stack and we can add on three, five, or more pounds of lean body mass to your frame, the amazing thing is, is that you're actually gonna improve your metabolism. And this is gonna make it a lot easier for you to set yourself up for a successful fat loss phase in the future. So my question to you would be, when's the last time you dedicated six months of your life to building muscle and eating enough calories where you knew you weren't dieting? It's probably been a long time for a lot of you out there. So my best tip of advice for you today is if you feel like you're stuck, just like I said in tip number one, if you feel like you're stuck, just stop being stuck. Implement those calories, reverse diet yourself back up close to your maintenance, and keep in mind that reverse dieting does not mean we gain weight or get fat or gain weight that you don't want to have to lose in the future. I believe that reverse dieting or the idea of going to calorie maintenance means that we are optimizing your metabolism so we reach a calorie ceiling, fueling your body to build muscle to properly recover, train a little bit harder. Maybe you're training three days a week, four days per week. You can still train that many days and still build the muscle that you want as long as you are forcing a progressive stimulus in the gym and properly sleeping at night and fueling your body appropriately. So let's focus on building muscle. And I can guarantee you that this will have tremendous carryover when it comes to you starting your fat loss journey. And last but definitely not least is how you feel. Now what I like to tell people is your hormonal profile essentially dictates how you feel. So if you're tired all the time, you're sluggish, you're dealing with some constipation, your GI problems, feel bloated, no energy, you're not recovering, you're sore all the time, Chances are there's a reason for that and you should probably investigate that. But what I'm really talking about here is the in-depth understanding of what metabolic adaptation truly is. So everything that essentially dictates how you feel typically is a direct reflection of what's going on inside of your body or your hormonal profile, okay? So the common things that I see oftentimes are women dealing with hypothalamic amenorrhea or a loss of their period. Also women that are dealing with iron efficiencies or anemia, women that have hypothyroidism, or just for whatever it's worth, their entire hormonal profile when we're taking a look at labs is downregulated, and we have to essentially bring that back. Now, if you are somebody that's dieting and you've already gone down the rabbit hole of just not feeling well, chances are that there's going to be some type of hormone imbalance that we should investigate. If you happen to be somebody who wants to learn about that, we at The Educated Dieter can actually help you with that. And if you visit our Google review page, you'll see a lot of testimonials and reviews on there with women that we've helped do the same thing with. So my third and final tip is understanding that your hormones and your hormone balance essentially dictate how you feel. So like I said in the beginning of the video, if you're tired and wired, if you know, you're stressed out, you're not seeing any more weight loss, you're doing all the things, you're doing all the classes, and nothing is working, then chances are we need to take a look under the hood, we need to take a look at the diagnostics of the engine, which is your blood labs, and we have to actually devise a plan of action on what we can do to get you back in the driver's seat, we can fix these adaptations, and we can actually help you achieve your health and wellness goals finally. So if you happen to have any questions for me, just go ahead and drop them in the comment section down below. Those are my three things that I would strongly urge you to consider if you happen to be a low calorie dieter. I hope you all found this video helpful. Thanks so much for tuning in. God bless and I'll see you soon.